Hello, Wanderers. Today we begin our episode with ill news. The Magnar of Magnars, Greenseer Steer, has died at 65 years of age. Though he died of old age, it was not as though he did not lead a vigorous and dangerous life, having led his people the Then into many wars of conquest to bring the lands north of the Wall to heal and to hopefully one day name himself King Beyond the Wall. Unfortunately, that did not seem to be in the fates for his lifetime, but perhaps they will be in the fates for his son, Halleck. And we will be playing as Halleck and trying to accomplish our goal in this episode. We will either be naming ourselves the King Beyond the Wall, attacking the Night's Watch and attacking the land south of it, or we will die trying. So let us continue as Greenseer Halleck. We do have a few wars that we are currently in, but we'll check out the situation a little bit first. We did do some conquest off screen, and that's essentially when I saw that <laughs> the Magnar Steer ha was dead, so we will be picking it up right after that and uh, in the midst of some wars of conquest here. But you can see that our kingdom has split straight down the middle, really, with our younger brother, Scarolf, as the Magnar of the Frostfangs. So we will probably need to bring our younger brother to heal, but I don't think we're going to need to do that uh, right away. In fact, it might not even be necessary at all, but we we shall see. When we name ourselves King Beyond the Wall, we'll have a little bit more options related to that. As you can see, the struggle is very close to hitting that hostility phase. A few more wars and potentially some executions of enemy rulers, things like that, should give us what we need in order to uh, get the ending decisions there. So. Uh, we will finish off these wars, and we're going to speed through this kind of early process. We've seen what these wars are like. Uh, you know, the fights here going on just kind of much as they do. Uh, we have a very large army. We have the forces to take on these smaller wildling tribes. Nobody can really stand against us at this point. So we will be speeding through this a little bit. Uh, of course, we have one. 1-1, one, one, and he uh, will be doing a lot of fighting. I do want to take a look at this because, as you can see, 1-1 one, one over the course of this campaign, and his prowess is at 60, which I don't think I've ever seen before. That is insane. It's got to be the highest in the game. But, as you can see, just the list of people that he has killed in this game playthrough is insane just like right from the beginning with the boar hells and then just progressing on killing even the other giant magnar mag the mighty it has been quite something here for one one's prowess in war so we can actually probably take a look if we go find no not find title if we go and take a look at find character and we sort by prowess. Yes, that is exactly right. Uh, one one is. Oh, well, actually, we'll go to all. Yeah, one one is the greatest <laughs> or the most dangerous foe to face. Foe to face in any battle. Even uh, Gregor Clegane, not quite. Oh, actually, no. Gregor is matching him. So Gregor and one one. That would be an interesting fight to see. I wonder who would come out on top. I mean, presumably, one one would be the one who would come out on top. Both of these warriors rely sheerly on their size and brute strength, but one one is a giant, like a literal giant. So I think he would probably be the winner there. Robert Baratheon still actually pretty close, so. And then Arthur Dane still alive, actually. These, these guys have just actually gotten better with age. 
somehow. Not sure, not sure how they pull it off, but I would like to know their secrets. Anyways, like I said, we're just gonna finish these wars off unless anything interesting is going to happen. In the meantime, we will let you know. So as you can see here, as we were trying to finish up and deal with those wars, we have a, de a demand from some of our vassals, a demand to dissolve the kingdom of the Then. They say that we cannot maintain unity. I say that I will not be threatened. They've got quite a few forces here going up against us. We are definitely going to need to employ both of those strategies from our able commanders. But more importantly, we are going to need to go and deal with this immediately, really. I can't... I don't want to just leave these ice shelf people here, but can we surrender? What will I do? We'll pay them. Hmm. It might be the best idea just to, because we can't get a white piece. They won't accept it. And they're not really particularly close to accepting it. Uh, we don't we won't we don't need to surrender until it's absolutely necessary what we do need to do is get some mercenaries where is our where are we raising our troops from here let's bring some mercenaries in right over here on our way to deal with the enemies so let's find our mercenaries Got a few already hired, but we can can't afford. Can extend the contract, which we'll have to do essentially. We can't afford the surrender anyways. Or okay, well, we're gonna do what we can here. Where are we tied up? It's commanding another army. Where is this army? Assessing the situation. So we've got some troops here. I'm going to switch your commander to you. And we're going to try to, I suppose, meet up with the rest of our troops if we can. I'm going to take over this army here. Our best and only chance of defeating this rebellion is to catch as many of their forces separated as we can because they have way too many. And there's no way we can beat them if they band all together here. So we're going to send our troops in here to join in the... Oh, well, I guess we just wiped their army out. Okay, guys, guys, try to gather up here, please. Try to go to the same place. That would be ideal. You can see a massive army here from... Our the war that our father had started. We can get some perks, so we're gonna tr mercenary cost could be helpful. Could have been helpful before. Don't really need a Castellan right now, but I'm gonna put one here. Chieftain Wun can take over as our Castellan admiral. Sure, let's just fill in those council positions. Try to keep those vassals of ours who are still loyal to us uh, loyal as long as we can so who is leading this rebellion it is it is you Magnar Eric of the Drowned Forest alright best plan of action would probably be to go and directly siege his capital I can't see oh, okay this is where their main army is Uh, our queen has lost the baby. That is unfortunate. A lot of things going on here. Can get some ransoms. Okay, well, we'll need the money. Titles can be created, declare wars, nothing. Oh, we can call in Scarolf, though. Yeah, there we go. We'll call our house member to to war, uh, to join us in subjugating these. Ah, good. 
See, our brother, he's a good brother. He doesn't have a lot of troops, but he's gonna join us in dealing with these unruly vassals here. So we're going to siege down the drowned forest here, take their capital, and then we're probably gonna go straight in and engage them in battle. I think that we'll have the advantage in the battle. We shall see, let's take a look. Yeah, okay. So I think we're gonna be able to win this fight. This is gonna be the, probably one of the deciding factors here in this civil war. So, uh, I don't really, I don't have time to deal with your petty squabbles. Can't you see what we're dealing with here? An armed rebellion. Oh, and look at that. We managed to split their army in half. Unfortunately for them, that's going to end up <laughs> uh, being a pretty bad move there. They might have had a chance if they had stayed together, but we're going to crush them in this battle here quite handily, no doubt. And this, uh, and then we're going to go and <laughs> deal with the rest of them too, because they're, they decided to stay close by. Fancy that. And will we be able to catch them? We might be able to get them around here somewhere. Yeah, there we go. Let's take a look at the uh, details of that battle. 1-1 uh, one, one doing what 1-1 one, one does. As you can see, he has slayed a few. Magnar Male was slayed. Magnar Male the Impaler slayed in that battle. Uh, nobody on the enemy side that it, that we can see, really, but good. We are dealing with these rebels, and actually, we might ha we might be able to deal with these rebels swiftly enough that we can go and finish off that war uh, on the west shelf, so. Ah, uh, and here we are, personally. We've got G Magnar Halleck personally going up against... Magnar Eric here. Uh, as you will no doubt remember, we are a very skilled warrior ourselves and a very able commander, uh, holy warrior, and just we are well suited to dealing with this. And a Magnar Eric is not going to have uh, much chance here. Oh, our queen was wounded. Oh no, she wounded somebody else. Oh no, she was maimed. Our queen was maimed in this battle. Horrifying. The the consequences of this civil war are nothing to be scoffed at. And I suspect that Magnar Eric will be severely punished for what he has done here. Let's go and take the enemy army here that they decided to come in and try to assist their allies, but not going to go well for them. Magnar Sigorn got his head ripped off. Well, okay. We inherited the chiefdom of the haunted forest. All right. Fair enough. The battles here are <laughs> very painful. Chieftain Egon was slain. Soren was slain. And then, yes, as you saw, Magnar Sigorn is killed in this battle, so... So we're sieging down, what, we're sieging down Craster's Keep? I mean, we do need that anyway, so I'm actually, can we split off? Yeah, let's split off this small amount of soldiers and we'll go and finish off Craster's Keep here. I think, I think we should be fine with the army we've got here. Yeah, it looks like we'll be able to engage them and take the small, this little small army. So we've done a really good job of splitting the enemy up, which is the only way that we were going to win this fight. And taking their smaller armies and dealing with them one at a time is always the best option if you have those options. So there we go. All right, let's put somebody in charge of this. I kind of suppose you could do... Uh... Yeah, let's let's deal with this. This war is gonna be 
something something else. Uh, we might surrender it really if we if we have to. I don't think we're gonna have the forces to manage that after this civil war here. Injured captain, that is unfortunate. Blue Elk rampaged, becoming a berserker. Well, that's not going to be enough. And there we go. So we are getting the war score battles won. Score kept. Okay, so we need to... Uh, let's see. We got to take back the land that they've captured. That is going to give us another 10%. And capture a little bit of theirs, so... Let's head down to Brokenwood. Deal with that. All right, here we are. You can see that we have taken Craster's Keep. Oh, very good. Then we can bring those troops back in. You know, we could probably siege down this part with, with just that. So why don't we go... And no, we don't want to take that to attrition. Let's go here and siege down some of their lands with our armies. Can we siege down multiple ones? Let's see. Split off enough for that. And then we'll send the rest over here to Holder's... No. Okay, we're gonna have to return. They saw that small army and they thought, oh, we could try to take them. Not the case. It was a trick. It was a trick by Magnar Halleck to draw the enemy in. And as you can see here, the rebels are fighting against some other small groups as well. So we'll actually split our army in half this time. So these three armies can kind of reinforce each other as they siege down these areas. Should give us enough protection. And the enemy's forces are barely surviving this little fight here. So actually, I might even... No, I don't want to... just don't want to take that attrition. Who are these seven dudes just hanging around over here, too? Oh, this is the army of uh, Scarolf. Interesting. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna siege. Oh, so actually, all we needed to do was finish the siege of Tusk Point here, and we can get the rebels uh, and, and enforce our demands upon them. So you imprison all rebellious vassals and gain title revocation against them. I suspect we may be using that. Yeah, 48 dread. There we go. Look at that. Enforce the demands. Whew. You can tell I was like caught up in that just because it was so... <laughs> I thought that was going to be a lot worse than it was actually. That was not the most difficult... But did my brother... Uh, what just happened to my brother? Siblings? You are now just a chieftain. Your entire realm has been split up. You're just, yeah, and now you're just part of my lands. What? Oh, my poor younger brother could not keep control of the Frost Fangs. Now it's all split up here. At least there's some thin rulers, but we'll see if they decide to join me when I name myself King Beyond the Wall. I, I honestly, I don't even want to deal with this war. Will they accept my peace? They will not. We could just surrender. We'll spend some prestige. That's not that big of a deal. And we'll pay some money. I just, I have no desire to bring all my forces back there to deal with them. Uh, so we will not be doing that because we have more important things to deal with. And that is the fact that we now have the decision to establish Thin Dominance. Look at this. Dynasty gains 10,000 renown. We gain the nickname King Beyond the Wall. We can unlock the creation of the Empire Beyond the Wall. And tons of interesting little bonuses and things like that. We defeated this rebellion. We have the majority of the lands either 
uh, under our direct control or are under our influence, the Then are clearly the undisputed masters of the lands north of the wall and potentially the lands south of the wall too here. For too long have the free folk suffered at the hands of the Night's Watch. Today we will restore the hope that the descendants of the first men lost millennia ago. There is now no other realm that can truly contest than dominance in the lands beyond the wall, or the priests and settlers who bring the word of the old gods and then civilization to its villages. All that remains is to declare victory, having decided how to proceed with our rule. So there we go. We can get a ton of dynasty legacies here. I would like to get uh, House of Warriors. I think that's proven true for sure. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Pillaging? Do we want to do pillaging? I mean, we are raiders as well. Always space in the hole. Let's see. Faithful magistrates. Title creation cost. That could come in handy here. Uh, we don't really need to build anything. What about blood? I mean, the blood of the... Uh, essentially, we are considered a god among then, so I think going down blood for a little bit uh, could be good. Uh, reinforcing good congenital traits. Glory. That seems... Uh, I think that we are a glorious uh, dynasty, so... Boom. We got a lot of really good uh, bonuses there just from that itself. And we can create titles. Can we... Can we create the empire title? What do we need to to do that? We need 200. Uh, yeah, okay, so. Well, we've got a lot of prisoners. We would have the money, but we need to, uh, we need some more counties. Okay, so. I'm going to sort through this, figure out exactly what needs to be done here. But one thing that we we do need to deal with is Eric. Like, he led that rebellion. And there is only one... There is only one thing we can do. We can't revoke the titles because we need... High, well, we might as well. We might as well just execute you then. Yeah, he is a known criminal. Eric will be executed. Uh, can we ransom 30 prisoners? How much money do you think we'll get if we just ransom everybody? Eric was the leader, I think it can be safe to say. We will, well, a lot of these, a lot of these people don't really like us. All right, execute, execute. The leaders of the rebellion will be executed. There we go. That was most of them. We'll ransom the rest. That should give us that little boost of money that we need. And once we get the money, then we can do more things here. So, we are going to take care of all these little things that we need to do to get the title and name ourselves King Beyond the Wall. It's just more conquering. We don't need to see that. We are... We have more important matters to deal with. So, I will come right back once we have kind of taken back the Frost Fangs and dealt with those enemies there. So, a bit of time has passed in-game and in real life. I had to stop and take a little break because of just the sheer amount of war that was going on. This has been the theme of the whole campaign, has been conquering these small wildling clans and taking them over, bringing them under the banner of this great thin kingdom that you see here now which is being ruled by the man who styles himself as Halleck, King Beyond the Wall. But we need to cement that by creating the actual title itself, which we can finally do now. We have the counties that we need and we have the money. So let us create the title. 
kingdom beyond the wall. And there we go. We are now, as we have always been, the Magnar of Magnars, but we are easily the most powerful of all of the wildling leaders to come since probably Raymond Redbeard, who we know from in that last episode when we took a look at his dynasty, the King's Bloods. And now we can see that we are the king beyond the wall. Well, what shall we do with this power? Let us hold court first and foremost. That will be our first order of business. We shall hear the petitioners to King Alec, and we will see who comes to us. High Chief, this Rayleigh has come. She proposed a cadastral survey of all the counties you own. Uh, no, I don't think we have the money for that. We may need to hire mercenaries in the very near future. Can we potentially, hmm, host a festival to celebrate our rich then culture? Indeed, we did choose the dominance option in the uh, hostility phase there, so the then culture will stand above them all. Seems my vassal Magnar Hagen has been nursing a temper. Cannot abide the tolerance of heretics like Chief Disraeli. Hmm. What can, what should we do? I suppose High Chief Disraeli must convert. Indeed, convert to Magnaric, which she does. Good for her converting to the Magnaric religion. And now she recognizes our rightful place as a god among men. Much as uh, Chieftain Wun here is as well. Still at his age of 63. He's just gotten stronger. I don't know how he does it. But he has actually gotten stronger the older he gets. Is that a bug? I don't know. But Wun Wun is a powerful warrior. And he absolutely hates us. Interestingly enough. Well, he'll hopefully serve us well in the coming war against... The Night's Watch. Who is the Lord Commander? Lord Commander Eben of no dynasty, really. He is a Hills clansman, Old God, so he's from the north, but he is craven, arrogant, and forgiving. How did he end up as the Lord Commander? I do not know. But he's a skilled tactician, overseer, terrain expert, journaler, albino. Interesting. Probably not the strongest of the Lord Commanders of recent memory. Uh, and that serves us very well indeed. As you can see, we we are very close to matching the Night's Watch in terms of warriors. They've got 6,700. We've got about 6,000. Is there any way that we can improve... The amount of warriors that we have. Well, we could certainly increase the size of our retinues, which we'll probably do. Get those up a few levels. We have the prestige to spare. So let's bump those up for a few levels. We're going to go down in our prestige while those fill up, but that should be okay. My daughter Erica and her friend Osha have taken a copy of the Legends from the study and brought it into the playroom uh we could give her what kind of traits here humble humble's a good trait for a girl child i think so we have and as you'll notice we do have three sons now uh yes indeed three sons from our various wives that we have taken and that will ensure the thin dynasty well into the future and a few daughters as well. So, ah, uh, look at that. There we go. We are definitely, definitely going to be able to match the, the Night's Watch here. I think we could probably just, can we increase them all, all the way up here? I mean, we can reduce them later, but we do have a, a massive amounts of, uh, prestige to spend so look at that some of our vassals are going around conquering lands 
Oh, and our dear wife, Vicuna, has died of her injuries. Sad day. Sad day indeed. It's all in the script. Wun is writing us heartfelt poetry. Thank you, Wun. Thank you indeed. There we go. Look at that. We now have certainly more forces than the Night's Watch can muster and a ma and enough money from which to potentially hire some mercenaries as well. I wouldn't want to spend all of our money, but I think we could probably hire the Lakeman Band. Indeed, we shall. So, what what is our plan here? The plan is obvious. Storm the wall, destroy the Night's Watch, and leave the land south open to our future victories. And with that, I think that we are ready. Let us declare war on the Night's Watch here. Conquer the Duchy, conquer the Duchy of the Wall. Raise all of our forces, raise them all there. Hire those mercenaries, Night Runner Band of Forest in. That should be perfect. And we'll gather up our forces and deal with the Night's Watch army. If they venture north of the wall, I think that will put us at the best advantage. But we will need to see what they do. So here we are gathering the, the entire army. This is essentially everyone, every able-bodied warrior north of the wall that we could muster is coming here. And we are going to do, do battle with the Night's Watch. Knight's Watch. Let us hope that all goes according to plan. Looks like we might be able to capture a small amount of their forces here. And that will be <laughs> ideal if we can get a few of them just like this and take a few of their armies down here. It's actually a very even battle despite the fact that we outnumber them quite significantly. I'm a little concerned by that, actually. Fortunately, we can't hire any more mercenaries. We're going to have to hope that we can turn this battle in our favor, despite the fact that it doesn't seem to be going that way. The Night's Watch are skilled warriors, and they do seem to be winning this fight. We're going to have to pull back here. Well, we lost the first battle of this war. So what do we do from there? Hope, I suppose. Let them split up and maybe engage with them in smaller numbers. That would be the hope, I suppose. Can we catch this one small army? They're going to gather up again. But I think we might be able to get this one here in advance. If we can... Yeah, it looks like we'll be able to get this small army here. Perfect. And there we go. So at least we dealt with one of the smaller forces. Alright, let's... Can we move in and try to siege down Castle Black? Possibly. Looks like they're going to go through onto the other side of the wall here. Well, we're going to siege down Castle Black. So let's see how this goes. So as you can see here, we have once again engaged in battle with the Night's Watch. They have come to lift the siege of the Castle Black. And I'm afraid this battle will not be going in our favor. Once again, the Wildlings have been turned back in this ill-fated attempt to take the wall. And with that, I suspect that this war is essentially done and, and over. I don't think we have much hope of, of dealing with the Night's Watch here. Uh, after this point, they've, they've got too many troops and they're better trained than most of our wildling warriors obviously the thin warriors 
are quite skilled and hardy warriors, but the rest of the wildling rabble cannot be trusted to hold that shield wall. I suspect that we may try to engage in one last battle, fight one more time against our enemies here, and hope and hope that we find some success. The king beyond the wall, though, does not seem to have what it takes to defeat his enemy. And once more, the wildling army is crushed. In, and in that battle, we even lost one of our wives. And there you go. As you can see, this conquest ends with the wildlings surrendering. Unfortunate fate. So, though we may be the undisputed king beyond the wall, the Night's Watch has proven themselves to be more than a match for us. Will the King Beyond the Wall raise his armies once more? Or will the sting of that defeat be what is the Fen's undoing? Well, unfortunately, we shall not know the answer to that, as this campaign ends here on an unfortunate defeat. But we have more series coming on the way. So until then, thank you for watching.